Flat line, trout line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread and mustard greens, that's how we live and it sure feels fine. Well, you can't change us, that's the way we know. Cajun people live like they did long ago. So join the fun, live off the land, cause there ain't nothing better than a Louisiana man. Line, trap line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread, mustard greens, that's how we live, and it sure feels fine. Hey everybody, welcome to Cajun Living and Cooking. My name's Rodney Dupree, and today we got a really cool show for y'all. We over at my buddy Stoney's house again, who cooked that brisket really good. And we're sharing some recipes. We're going to be cooking on the pit and we're going to be cooking inside. We're cooking a white wine chicken pasta, which is going to be out of this world. We're cooking an apple pie on the pit. We're cooking a grilled Caesar salad with grilled croutons. And we're going to throw in a couple cocktails for y'all. So uh, hang on. Cajun Living and Cooking is fixing to start right about now. All right, y'all. Here we are. Got my buddy Stoney Hughes How's cooking going, again. Buddy? How's it going? Doing good, doing good. Now, uh, what are we cooking first? Um, today we're going to be doing um, my uh, white wine sauce chicken pasta and apple pie on the grill. Wow, and wow. I think you're doing the salad and the drinks, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, now, tell me what all's, what all's in your white wine chicken pasta. Um, we're going to do a small pot white wine chicken pasta. Normally I do a large pot and generally that starts with 10 pounds of onions and two bottles of white wine. Today we're going to bring a little bit smaller than that, gotcha. but um, it starts with onions and wine, garlic, mushrooms, um, the spices that I've kind of thought about for a couple of years on how I want it to taste. And you've got um, some really good spices in right. here. It's oregano, thyme, basil, bay leaves, uh, Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Um, top secret mix. Top secret, top mix, secret right mix. I don't know if I can get that one to you yet. Maybe when we know each other gotcha. a little better. Salt and pepper. Yes. Minced garlic. Yes. The mushrooms. Yes. We've got the sweet Vidalia yes. onions. Yes, sir. And you can't get them all year, but they can. When you or can, when you, you get, get them, them, get them. Yep. Absolutely. You put butter and cream. Yes. And you, I see you got two kinds of chicken. Absolutely. Uh, the dark chicken is a little. I don't want to say tougher meat, but it holds together a little better, and it has the fat and the, the chicken breast actually uh, shreds a little better. So when people are eating the food, they get a little more meat content in oh, there. Yeah. It kind of fools the brain a little bit. Okay, and that's the same thinking on, uh, what we got, an andouille? Andouille and beef a, sausage. A beef sausage, yes. okay. Um, and when I do my beef sausage, now the andouille, I'm, we're just gonna cut in discs. Okay. But on the beef sausage, I like to cut that as in a large diagonal, and that's another meat fooling um, trick that we have to, it feels like you have more meat in your mouth and, and the taste of it. So. I like that, mm -hmm. I like that. And then the two sausages ought to add some good flavor Absolutely. to it. Absolutely, yep. And you use the rotini? Uh, the rotini for this dish is best if you use a spaghetti. It really doesn't hold the sauce. This is a very rich, um, thick sauce and you don't want it to run off. You want, you want the noodles to kind of, the pasta to hold the sauce in there. And then the wine. Absolutely. Got this, is the wine. Not, this is not a cooking wine. No, I don't use cooking wine when I cook. Um, I think there's a little too much uh, um, salt content in the cooking cherries. So my rule of thumb is for cooking with uh, any alcohol, really, is if you drink it, cook with it. So we was talking a little bit about uh, was this a Cajun dish or Italian dish or a French dish, uh, you pretty much meld it in the... I've kind of, just over the years, I've kind of, you know, everybody has their own um, version of a white wine sauce, anything. And I've just kind of melded this one. I took a little bit from the Italians, a little bit from the French, a lot of the Cajun, and just kind of put them together. Well, I was thinking it, it would be for the rich Cajuns, because most Cajuns, if they had a bottle of wine, they wouldn't give it to the chicken. No. They would just drink it. They would drink it. But if you got plenty of money in your That's Cajun... Right. You would give one bottle to the chicken and, and one bottle to the drink. Right. That's right. That's absolutely <laughs> right. Okay, well, I guess we're ready to get things started here. What am I going to do? Um, if you don't mind, help me out here. I'll cut up the chicken. If you, like we said, if you just take the andouille and just cut it in discs, and then if you take the sausage and cut it in long lengths, that would be awesome. Okay. Now, walk me through the process. How, what are we going to start? How is this um, going to come together? Basically, we're going to brown the meat first, and once we brown the meat, 
then we're going to uh, take that off of the, uh, the, the pot uh -huh. and then we'll um, uh, do the onions, the mushrooms, and the garlic and saute those down. Yeah. And then we'll go straight in with the wine from there. Um, you want to get the wine up to at least 173 degrees to uh, cook off the alcohol. Oh. And then once you can, no, 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 <laughs> the flavor's still going to be there, don't okay. worry. Okay. But uh, you want kids to be able to eat the dish too, so you want to cook the alcohol out. Yeah. Gotcha. And then once you do that, uh, it reduces a little bit, and then you add the stuff back, you add the meat back, and then we'll start with the cheese, and then come in with the cream, and then you just kind of work those both to the consistency that you want. Okay. And how long will that cook together then once you get everything once you get everything together a minimum of an hour to an hour and a half a minimum gotcha. you really want these flavors to kind of infuse each other yeah and you want to taste each one of these little yeah. flavors absolutely you? and you will actually you will all right y'all we're fixing to get the cutting we're gonna get some chicken cut sausage cut we're gonna get a fire lit and you're gonna see it right here all right stoney it's time to get it going so uh tell me what we're doing first we're gonna brown our meats and i do the chicken first and then add the sausage to it once we get that browned, then we'll swap over and do our, our uh, onions and mushrooms and garlic and then put it all together and start working from there. All right, well, let's there get it browned. Let's go ahead. You throw that chicken in there for me. All right, let's see. We'll go this way. Absolutely. Look at there. Two kinds. We've got the dark meat and the white meat in and there. And the white meat. That's the original white meat, not the other white meat. Yes. <laughs> now, uh... How long are, are you gonna are you gonna season this now, or how long is this gonna cook um, down before? Most of the times, I just throw a little um, spices on there, one of my one of my rubs or something like that. Um, but we're gonna add some spices to it in a little bit after we do the sausage and do the vegetables. We'll just add it all together there. So how long do you brown it? Just till I'm happy, to be honest. Gotcha. I don't I don't really brown for color or anything like that anymore. I think it just adds a little to the flavor when you brown it and it helps tenderize the meat a little faster. So I just brown it till I'm happy and go from there. Cool, cool. I, 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 uh, I can smell it already, the smoke mm -hmm. from the andouille and, mm -hmm. uh, and the beef sausage. So yep. I guess we're ready to brown it and then we're gonna be adding more to it. So y'all hang on. All right, Stone, just like you said, yep. the white meat is shredding up a little bit mm -hmm. and the, uh, the dark meat is still chunky. Right. And that's what we were shooting for. That, that just gives a little more meat in, in every bite. And I like that. You know, people like meat and, and they want to, you know. Yeah. They don't always want the consistency of big onions. I like big onions. But they want to taste something in their sauce. And that just makes it really easy to do that. Right. So you said you're ready now to we're season ready to in a little bit. We can season a little bit right there if you'd like. Um, and a uh, little something quick here. What you got there? Blanchard's blend. Oh, man. You like Blanchard's that? Blanchard's blend. Yeah, we use that all the time. That's a good season, man. I, I make a lot of my own stuff, but for something like this, just to season your meat and, and any any process you have, this is some good stuff here. I like yeah. the ingredients in it. Kyle has a good product here, the Blanchard's blend, y'all. If you're not using it, get some. We talking about ingredients. So Cajun boys, let me ask you something. What's one of the main ingredients in Cajun food? Main ingredients. Mmm. Pepper. Lanyard. Lanyard. That's right. And on that thought process, I got something for you today. It is the 4th of July weekend, and I know we're talking about just doing some apple pie for the 4th of July. I went ahead and did you some of my ribs as a little bit of something extra for you today. Wow. Wow, that's a good looking rib. That's, I, I want you to try them while I'm stirring this. I'm, I want you to break off a little piece of that and give that a try right quick and tell me what you think. Good old rib. Can't have 4th of July without barbecue ribs and apple pie. Look and here. a few fireworks. We got an early taste test going here. Look while at that you smoke that, ringing in there. I'm going to add my sausage here if you don't mind. Land you out. Land yeah. That's right. A little something extra. Hey, that's a good rib, so. You like that? That's a good rib. It's got the, a little sweetness. It's got a little savory in there. It's, it's, it's cooked. That's competition rib. I, that's actually my competition rub that I put on there for you so you could taste what my ribs like. If I were to go do a competition, that's exactly how they would come out. That's good. That's good. One of the misconceptions about ribs is that people want to fall off the bone ribs. And, and you'll lose pretty much every contest like that. What they want to see is that bite mark. And I think I hit that. Did I hit oh, that yeah. one right? Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah, I'm fixing to wear this out. Go here. We All can... right. Well, we got the meat in the pot. Meat's in the pot. Everything's in there. We're gonna brown that down a little more. Yep. Then we're, we're gonna take. We're sorry about that. We're gonna take that out, and we're gonna put some onions and some mushrooms and garlic, and then we're gonna saute that, and then put everything back together again. And then the next step, we're, we're gonna have another pot on here. We're gonna go ahead and do the the pasta. Get that ball. We'll get that ball too, because it doesn't cook inside here. We put that separate and then add it to the sauce. All right, y'all. Here it comes. We're gonna add the rest of the stuff. Get the pasta going, and in the meantime, we're gonna have a little lamb yeah, right here. See, so there you go. go. All right, y'all. We got everything what I'd like to call smothered down and brown. That's right. Yes, indeed. And it's time for the wine. All right. But y'all, uh, we didn't taste any. We didn't taste any of that. We're going to put it all, you put in the whole bottle? Put the whole bottle. And you said we're going to have to get it up to 170 degrees to get the alcohol. Minimum 173 degrees to get the, uh, wine, the alcohol content to evaporate. The flavor will still stay, but the alcohol will become. I hate that alcohol leaves, but I guess kids got to eat this too. Kids got to eat it too. You don't want drunk five-year-olds running around the house when you're done. So. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Balloons, blues, and barbecue. That's right. It's time for the Ascension Hot Air Balloon Festival at the Lamar Dixon Expo Center, September 22nd and 23rd. And the barbecue contest has gotten bigger and better. That's right. Lamar Dixon has teamed up with the BCA to feature a sanctioned event. What's that mean? Well, big cash prizes. Three categories on Saturday. Ribs, chicken, and brisket. And a steak cook-off on Friday. So sign up now at Lamar Dixon or go to the website for an application. Hey everybody, dust off that pit, light a fire under it, and let's see if your chicken is finger licking. RP Custom Trailers and Service is a fully stocked store for RV parts and accessories. With essentials such as tank treatments, hoses, lenses, vents, power cords, cleaning supplies, and everything else your camper may need. Known for customized living quarters and horse trailers for over 18 years. We now specialize in RV insurance work. Talk to Ryan about how to prevent blowouts, and oh yes, that leaky vinyl or rubber roof can be inspected and repaired also. Call or come by and see it all at RP Custom Trailers. Vaseline Fuel is back. Founded in the 1940s, Vaseline Fuel is still the region's only locally owned propane company, and we are proud to service our commercial and residential customers. Vassery Fuel offers both bulk propane and exchange tanks that have over 20% more fuel than any other brand. Exchange cases can be found at your local retailers like Hole in the Wall Seafood, Rouse's, Two Rows, and Ralph's Supermarket. The guys over at Galvez Hardware can refill that tank and qualify your out-of-date bottle. Give Vassery Fuel a call at 985-447-3668 for all your propane needs. getting ready to do the salad now and uh this recipe comes from something i've seen on the food network where they had uh you cut the romaine lettuce in half and you grill it okay and then i guess the added extra feature is we're making our own crouton so we're going to take this texas toast put some olive oil on it and grill that too and it'll all come together on the platter uh when you uh cut your uh lettuce do you put a little olive oil on that or any type of yeah, seasoning or anything like that I'm going to put some olive oil in and a little bit of salt and pepper and then put that on the grill. All right. And then these, we're going to do the same thing. We'll brush olive oil on it, put a little salt and pepper, and we'll cook them on the grill to get them crunchy. And uh, Well, I, I grew the tomatoes mm -hmm. and the cucumbers out of my garden this year. I mm -hmm. had a pretty good garden. We had so much rain, but uh, I, got, I grew some chocolate tomatoes and a couple different cherries, and I had a couple bushes of the orange came up, and then I, I made some really good big ones. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're going to take the cucumber, we'll be slicing it long ways to put on there, okay. and we'll be using Caesar dressing, so hopefully all this will come together to make a nice salad to complement your okay. white wine and chicken. Yeah, looks good, I'm ready. Okay, we're fixing to get the cutting off to all this salad, so y'all hang on, we're going to put it all together. Alright Stone, we're we'll back at the big green egg. You gotta love the good egg, huh? You gotta love, love it. it. Love yep. it. And I, I love the, the rig you got with the digital setup. That really makes, makes it life a little easier. So we're knocking 300 right now. Yep. What we're going to do? They recommend actually cooking them on both sides mm -hmm. for about five minutes. I don't think you need five minutes on lettuce. Okay. So we're gonna start them. We're gonna put them on down. Here's a little sizzle going. That's right. 
you char the cut side first mm -hmm. for roughly three to five minutes is what okay. we're going for. And what's neat about this, how many ever guests you have, that's how many mm -hmm. romains you put in half. Yeah. Now we're going to do the croutons. You want to do the croutons too? All right. We're going to put them on there. And they won't take long at all. Mm -hmm. And it's just some Texas toast. We put the olive oil on it and a little salt and pepper. So those are going on now. And they won't take as long either. I'm, I'm thinking they'll be just about as long as the romaine lettuce. See how much room we can fit them all Got in plenty there. of room on there, huh? Look That's a little holy. Yep, look at that. Plenty of room. All right, we're going to shut it down, let it cook, and we're going to end up flipping it over. We're going to bring it to the platter and plate it up. All right, Stoney, we've had about five minutes on here. and uh, Some people will cook them on the other side. Mm -hmm. I don't oh, think. Wow. Look I, how beautiful that yeah. is. Wow. Yeah, I don't think you want it to wilt too much. I, I don't either. I, I, I think this salad needs to be cooked on one side. Mm -hmm. So we're going to we're gonna go ahead and pull them off. Oh, yeah. Look how beautiful that is. Now, that bread's got to cook a little longer. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just starting to get a little okay. tightened up. But we're going to cook it a little longer. Oh, wow. That's going to make a good salad. Mm -hmm. Char it up in there. That, that olive oil, I guess, gives it the char. Mm -hmm. And then the... Uh, Salt and pepper on there, get in there a little deeper. Let's hide them down in there. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can figure out how many guests. To, you have how many heads of lettuce for how many mm -hmm. guests you have. Right. And you'll know if somebody's eating too many, too. There's <laughs> a couple missing, and everybody didn't get one. That's beautiful. Oh, that got nice right there on top. Yep, look at that. All right, we're going to let the breadcrumbs go a little while longer. Let's pull them into the center here. Oops, I lost one. Look at that. Well, they say you cook extra because everybody will be nibbling on mm -hmm. the breadcrumbs. I'm ready to nibble now. Just the test one. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, they're getting a little char on mm -hmm. them. Yeah. That looks great. That does. Tell you what, let's bring that one off of that end over here a little bit so it doesn't, there we go. So I don't want it to stick. Remember, Even the, the big green egg has that little two inch rim around it. Oh yeah. It. Yep. Oh wow, look at that. Okay, we're gonna let these go a little longer y'all and then we're fixing to put the salad together. So hang on, we'll be right back. All right, Stoney, we to the next step now, what are we doing? We, we, we got our veggies, our, our onions and um, our mushrooms and our garlic cooked down um, really good. The wine, the alcohol's going. So our next step is to put our cheese and we're going to put the cheese in there, melt it a little bit, throw a stick of butter in there, and then we'll add the cream to get the consistency that we want, and not forgetting that we still have to put the noodles in there too. So this pot's full. It's going to be happy. It's, it's going to be a happy pot in just a minute. <laughs> so you want to go ahead, we can go ahead and I'm start adding that cheese. You want to put the big bag put first? Put the big bag in there first. All the That's whole a thing. big old bag of cheese right there. All right, dump it in there. Just dump it in there. It ain't easy being cheesy. No, it is not. All right. So you're gonna let the cheese melt down. We're gonna we're gonna off. save that one. We're gonna save so this to later. Save it for our consistency. Okay. If we want to add some more cheese to it, um, we'll we'll do that. Man, that looks good. That looks good. Just wait a minute. It's we ain't got to the better. best part we yet. We ain't even there yet. It gets better every time. I, 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 as you cook it and as you add, mm -hmm. the flavors, y'all, we have in this house right now is. It's just amazing from the from the thyme to the oregano, from the 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 charred lettuce, the barbecue, the, the barbecue, the lanyap yap we got, uh, the apple pie flavor even coming through. I'm telling you, everything is coming together real good right now. Tell you what, why don't we go ahead and add that whole bottle of cream and the butter too? You want the butter first? Sure. Yeah, it work. Stick of butter. Mm -hmm. Stick of butter. And then we're gonna go with the cream. Go ahead and add the cream. All right, heavy whipping cream. It's a quart. Oh yeah, man! I'm gonna tell you what. That looks good. That looks. You could dip French bread in there right yes, now. Yes, indeed, and have done that before. Right now, with a little garlic yeah. French bread or something, and sop this up. That's gonna be some kind of plethora of flavors in there. Mm -hmm. From the wine, can't forget about the wine. It's in That's there. right. And then, the, and then the, the 
the brown chicken. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're just gonna let this cook down. We're gonna let it cook down, we're gonna melt the butter, get the cream and the cheese completely melted, and then in maybe 10 minutes we'll add the the um the noodles. You got it. Okay. Come together. Junior's Meat Market has everything you need when you're going to the camp, tailgating, or planning dinner. We make our own cracklings, beef jerky, hog cheese, and sausage right here in the store. We also process deer and hogs. Junior's Meat Market has an abundance of groceries and frozen items which include crab cakes, fried oysters, tilapia, and more. We have daily meat specials and we cook plate lunches every other weekend. Stop by Junior's Meat Market today and bring home dinner. Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life-threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information. DCTOFLA.com. All right, Stoning, we got the salad made. We're still cooking on the wine sauce. Ready for the apple pie. The apple pie. On the grill. On the grill. With smoke. Now, uh, you say you've been cooking this recipe that you found for probably over 20 years now. I found a really good apple pie recipe um, and I just kind of incorporated in my experimentation and found that it works really well on the grill with smoke. Yeah, so infusing that smoke into infusing it. Infusing the smoke on it. Okay, walk us through it. That's why I uh, put my pie dough on the bottom and this we are a store bought roll. Store bought. Um, pie I also dough. do another one where I make my own and instead of lard I use bacon grease. Wow. But I didn't want to drive you crazy with the ribs, the wine sauce, <laughs> and your salad all in one day. So we'll try that one another one. All right. Now, if we would have cooked any more stuff, we'd have probably been breaking the law. We'd have broke somewhere. Some law somewhere. Something <laughs> would have been broke. So. Well, cool. Now, you got the apple filling you're going to put in. Now, what 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 do you have in the filling? What do you have? Um, it's a really basic um, filling, but it, for this recipe, it's the Granny Smith apples. You peeled them. I, we, we peeled them and sliced them, um, but it's that tart. If you don't get a tart um, apple for this recipe, it really doesn't work. It's kind of too bland. So you want to you want to bounce that smoke off of the Granny Smith apple, uh, okay. and then you put like a real vanilla bean. You top it with a real vanilla bean ice cream, and it it doesn't sound like with the smoke it's going to work, but I promise you, have a little faith, and when it's done, you'll see what I'm talking about. Well, cool. Let's put it together. All right, let's do it. How many apples roughly is that? Um, for this recipe, I, I mean, you, you would look at probably six to seven cups. There might be a little bit extra, you know, um, it just it, it just depends on how it falls together, to be honest. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So you're going to basically fill it up? We're going to fill it up. All, all the, how, how far do you leave? All the way. I, it, I'll fill it up. If it's a little higher, it really doesn't matter. Once we so press how, the top on there, it'll hold it all in. So many, how, however many apples you have, that's how much you put in you it. You can put in it. Yep. So if you wanted a shorter pie, you'd put yep. less apples. Uh, I, I look at it like this. You can never have too many apples, garlic, or onions. Got so, it. So slicing them thin was key? Um, it, it helps for me. I know a lot of people, when they do their recipes, they, they slice the whole apple. But I find you get more apple and more of the sugar and everything you get a little more of the filling so to speak you got more surface area if mm -hmm. you cut the apples thinner yep. you got more pieces yep. of apple and you can you fill it in better big less chunks. air holes yeah okay but as you can see it's i smell it i yeah. smell that 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 uh was it a vanilla coming out of there the van is it no a, vanilla no, it, to, to be honest it's that granny smith apple um, wow you add there's there's sugar um, they're, they're in, in, for each pie that I do, um, like I said, it's about six cups of apple, um, a little over a cup of sugar, um, a little bit of flour, and um, some lemon juice. All right. That'll keep your apple from turning color. It'll keep it turning, but there's a little flavor when that you try it. When you're you're going you're gonna to feel it, uh, and it just, it just works so good for the smoke. I'm feeling it now. <laughs> Give me a minute, give me a minute. <laughs> so cool, once you fill this up, we'll add the top layer. We'll add the top layer, then we'll cut some holes in it because um, you don't want it to explode in your pit. 
and um, then we'll just kind of brush a little milk on it and um, put it in there and um, give it about an hour at 350 um, it just depends on your pit it could be uh, 45 minutes to an hour okay and you can kind of tell from the golden brown absolutely absolutely okay y'all we're putting it in we're gonna put the top slit it put some milk on it and it's going on the pit so hang on we're getting close to tasting some of this food all right, Stoner, we finally reached the finish line. That's right. We, yeah. we got some good stuff going right here. Now, what is this one? That's, That's the Cherry Moon. Cherry Moon, okay. Cherry Moon. It's got the uh, grenadine and the Sprite mm -hmm. and the Grey Goose in it. Okay. And this one is the Pineapple Mojito. Mojitos I'm familiar with because I was in Miami for a while, and it's a great beach drink when you're hot. It'll cool you off, so I'm, I'm, I'm saving that There's one. rum and agave right. nectar in there. And, it's got the pineapple and the mint, y'all, and this, I took a little sip a while ago, and I'm going to tell you, it's really good, really good. But we're fixing to get to the main course. The pie come out really good mm -hmm. with the vanilla ice cream. Loving it. But uh, let's dig into the main course right here, man. I don't even know where to start. Well, I'll tell you what, bro, the, the, the smell's still in here. You'll never get this smell no. out of your house. No. What? Wow. Shipping and handling free. Man, that is good, bro. You like that? The depth of flavor in there is just amazing. The, the, the thick, rich, creamy sauce mm -hmm. on top of the pasta. And the pasta is cooked perfect. The little, you had it al dente and then you dumped it in there and cooked it, it a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Wow. I got to go for a piece of this charred salad. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Mm -hmm. It's the Parmesan Reggiano cheese on there. Grated some lemon zest. Mm -hmm. Grilled it. Made our own croutons. The smoke on that lettuce is amazing. Bro. The smoke is what done it. Mm -hmm. The smoke flavor on there. Wait till you try the smoke on the apple pie. I can't wait any longer. Let's go ahead. Let's give it a shot. I want to see what you I'm think. going for it. I'm going for it. I'm going to try without the ice cream first mm -hmm. just to have the pie. The layers in there. <laughs> I don't, words can't describe that. No. The smoke in there. Mm -hmm. The smoke from the pit. Now, it, it works with the Granny Smith apples. I don't understand. Try it with a little ice cream on That's there. That's what I'm going to do. And, and I'm going deep. That's my going pride and deep. joy right there. I've been working 30 years on that recipe. You can sit down and take a break because you got it. Mm -hmm. Bro, I'm going to say a toast. A toast to some good cooking, man. Yeah. And good friends. Good friends and good food. That's right. Oh, man. I like that. That's good. That's good. Oh, man. You nailed it, bro. Boom. <laughs> I want to thank y'all for watching Cajun Living and Cooking, and we'll see you next week.